Mr. Banks uh, commented, I believe, on YouTube. Will this be Jar Jar? Uh, yes, okay. this is Jar Jar. Okay. Mr. J.J. J. Banks. Uh, wanted to know the best way to get my foot in the door with adjusting. I'm currently licensed as an independent adjuster, but would becoming a staff adjuster help get my foot in the door? Love the content. Good question. Um, I think that this, this, I see this a lot and I see this a lot as from people who say, you know what you need to do is you need to go become a staff adjuster for a year. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm never going to tell people to go do that for there are a number of reasons. One of those reasons is that if carriers see my content on YouTube and that I'm telling people to go, go get hired at their company for a year and then quit. Just right. so they can get training and pay training. Right. I don't know what would, if anything would happen, but it, I don't think that's that's not a good look. Right. I don't. I think it's counter. I think it's counterproductive because carrier the carrier path is not an invalid path. It's a it's a good way to go, especially if you get started early. Right. If, if you're just graduated from college or high school, even. Or you're in your like mid twenties. You don't have the resources to sustain yourself while you're trying to get a business off the ground. I would. T I I know people on the carrier side who got started when they were 22, 24, 26, who are getting ready to retire in their mid fifties. Yep. Very, 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 very well off, and then with a pension after that, right? And all they did was was just show up, you know, do the co corporate thing, and. Now they're getting ready to retire. And you know, something I preached to one of my, one of the young men that I helped raise, that, uh, you know, hey, jump in now, right out of college, you know, a few years from now, you look at your 401k. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know. Match, the matching on that? Oh yeah. I mean, it, IA versus staff adjuster. Are they asking should I become a staff adjuster first and then flow into IA? Or yeah. are they saying one versus the other? That's what they're, that's, that's the gist of that question is should, should they become a staff adjuster first? Um, because they want to be an IA. Would it be no, better to do I, that? I, you know, you want to become an IA, become an IA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, don't become IA light, you know, just go for it, figure out what you want to do, put yourself in that position that you can do it. You know, it's, we've all said, hey, if you're just going to quit your job and become an IA, it's probably not the smartest thing in the world to do. No. You know, I mean, I can tell you that if I had to do it all over again, you know, I'd probably still do it that way. But it, you know, it was stressful. You know, I mean, I made the decision to do it. And, but at the same time, I was in a position where I could do it. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't have to worry about, you know, a lot of things, but there's no way I could ever think about if I wanted to be independent. Well, that's the decision I made. Right. You know, this is where I want, this is what I want to do. I want to be independent, but I'm going to give that up to get quote unquote experience. Well, flash here. Most of your staff adjusters that are in the field, they're not first year adjusters. You know, they had to go inside for a while and sit yeah. behind a desk for a while. I mean, even you had four months of training that you had to go to, and you were an experienced adjuster. Yeah. So now you're going to sit there and go through all of that, you know, plus inside adjusting for a while. And then you might get to go outside, or they might say, guess what? You're not going out. And now you have absolutely zero scoping skills and zero yeah. experience of being an independent adjuster and what it's like. So what's the point? You know? Yeah. I mean, I would just bite the bullet. I mean, if it were me, I would just bite the bullet and do it and make sure it works out for you. You know, if you currently have a career, you know, and it's an expendable career, you know, stick with it until you get your opportunity, you know, and and then hopefully things work out well for you. <laughs> just be be absolutely prepared whenever your opportunity comes and then take it. Yeah, so save back money and everything. I mean, right. and get your gear and all that stuff ready to go. If you're gonna If you're going to do that, um, I'm going to say if you run a, a career for 25 or 35 years as a staff working at, a, at an insurance company, mm -hmm. I know people, like I said, 
that have been with the same company for their entire work, almost their entire working careers. And some of those people would consider retiring nicely and not having to do anything but play golf, but those folks will consider retiring into being an IA. Right. And they've got decades of experience at, the, at all kinds of levels. And when you're in, at, in the corporate, in, the, in a company, they want to promote from within, they're going to, you know, they're going to pay for training. Yep. You might get an MBA out of it. You might get a, a CPCU out of it. And then if you get all those credentials and you get all this, and you get up into the, in the leadership, you know, levels, why would you want to go off and be an adjuster anyway? You know, right. it's probably, you probably have more fun in an air conditioned boardroom or a, you know, conference room than you'd be out sweating your butt off on roofs. In a swamp in Southern Louisiana. Yeah. So. I don't know. September. It's it's choices. I would say I wouldn't try to use one as a stepping stone to the other. Um, and going the other way, going from an IA to a staff adjuster is even more challenging because a lot of companies won't hire IAs. Because they've, you've been independent for so long and they view you as almost unmanageable that you're going to be too restless and you've got yeah. certain preconceived ideas as far as what you should do. Her first hurricane blows up and you're gone. Right. 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 That's your thoughts. I... I've also heard, I've also seen some people that have decided to jump into the business and they wanted to go to work for a particular company. They saw a company was hiring for uh, inside property adjusters and they thought they would do that and try to get that job. And they went to apply for it, was given an opportunity, but then they had to take a test. Okay. They, they gave them a sample, you know, they had to sit down and take a test and check their knowledge and they failed it. And because they failed that test, they could not go any further in the hiring process. They couldn't even reapply for the job for... For I forgot how long she said she had to wait till next that she could do it again. So, you know, it's just not a given, hey, I'm going to become a staff adjuster. You still got to have some experience or some skills and some knowledge and be able to pass certain levels of competency even to become a staff adjuster for some companies. Yeah. You know, even though they're willing to hire people without experience, you still have to have a certain level of competency before they're going to allow you to come in. So it's not real simple to just say, hey, I'm going to become a staff adjuster. Right, right. You know. I don't think it's a good way to go. Um, I would I wouldn't recommend doing that again because, you know, f finally you know, the kind of the final piece I think that whole thing is is that when you do go to become a staff adjuster, you go you're joining a team, right? So then those people, um, you get to know your team. You got your managers counting on you. The company's counting on you. You, you start to get to know the you know when in your territory as a, as a staff adjuster you start to get to know the contractors in the area and then you're like all right well i think i got enough experience to go be an ia and you quit you know yeah you're you're letting all those people down right because then they got to bring somebody new in it's going to cost it's going to cost the insurance company another who knows how much tens of thousands of dollars for another four months worth of training for that new person right they don't want right. to do that they want to try to hang on to you so i would say pick one and go with it and I don't want to be Mr. Negative here, but at the same time, not everybody makes it immediately and as successfully immediately as an IA. Sometimes you're going to get that opportunity. You're going to jump on your first storm. You know, you're thinking this is your chance. You go hit that storm. You're released from that storm. And you don't see any more work for a while, okay, um, for whatever reason. You haven't. And so here it is now you're trying to figure out what you're going to do and maybe thought you might have made the wrong decision because you went a little bit too far between your next work or you're just weren't something happened and now you want to go back to work for that insurance company they may not take you back you know yeah and then you want to go check out another company and you're trying to get a reference and they find out you're not eligible to be rehired for, for whatever reason then that makes it more difficult so i just i'd probably just steer away steer clear of that yeah <music>